How did a lost global civilization once cut solid stone with such ease and precision? Unimaginably large megalithic structures, laser-like cut stones, utilized within the baffling, polygonal masonry, not to mention the mystery surrounding the construction of the Great Pyramids. Many mysterious drilled stone cores can be found throughout Giza. These enigmatic tool marks can also be found at the incredibly ancient dolmen of Valkonsky in Russia, exposing the capabilities and clear technological prowess that this lost civilization, who we feel were possibly experiencing an ice age, had left in order to survive its fallout. Yet I digress. Discovered within Austria, we were initially presented with just these three images, two of the exterior, which, if one looks closely, not only displays the porthole of a hidden chamber hidden upon the side of a solid rock face, but that the surrounding rocks had also been cut and finished to an incredibly high standard somewhere in the very distant past. This indicated to us that this chamber that is not only reminiscent of the Hypogeum in Malta, with the addition of the stone within the circular chamber, which we cannot avoid feeling, could have some form of connection to resonance creation, with erosion indicative of a site with an age similar to Cappadocia's ruins, but later revealed to have been, as we expected, but one chamber, in a maze akin to that of the underground city of Derinkuyu. Hidden within an Austrian book of antiquities, we discover a series of fortunately mapped solid stone-cut chambers which litter this enormous chunk of exposed bedrock. Clearly an astonishing prehistoric site, one cut by an incredibly capably, and we feel, clearly technologically advanced civilization. For why would a civilization with simple, primitive tools, such as those made of blunt or brittle stones, or soft, malleable metals, such as that of copper, go to such extremes in the creation of a maze of hidden chambers, each not only finished to an incredibly precise degree, but to have worked stones into unnatural shapes outside of these chambers, many serving no essential function as far as we can identify? Who created this prehistoric site found within the landscape of Austria? How old are the chambers? What technology or tools were utilized in the creation of such a magnificent ancient ruin? Or indeed, that of the Volkonsky Dolmen, along with the many similarly drilled cores and their stone blocks found throughout Giza? Do all these pieces of evidence indicate the past existence of a lost civilization, one who possessed advanced stone-cutting technology? We find such possibilities highly compelling. We often find that many of the most intriguing, enigmatic, and as yet unexplained ancient ruins found all over our world are regularly claimed as the legacy of more recent, well-studied, permitted ancestors. However, this constant attribution to lesser-developed ancestors, studied and understood intimately through funded investigation, is self-contradictory in nature. For the parallel study of said ages, and in turn early man's development, disproves their own claim of said individual's culpability, or indeed capabilities. It seems that, although only a specific tale of events is publicly permitted for grants, offering financial security to so-called professors and historians, all willing to toe the proverbial line, inadvertently expose themselves without any outside intervention. Due to the detailed, well-established understandings possessed by modern archaeological study, we are, by default, also made intimately aware of the tools available to each of the claimed culprits, the knowledge levels in which they possessed, and the fact that many other factors regarding our not-so-distant ancestors disproves academia's own testimony when it comes to them as claimed builders. However, although, in our opinion, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest that many ancient ruins were instead re-inhabited by these claimed constructors, 
Utilizing these ancient sites, often fortresses, beneficial, often ingenious, and baffling constructions safely, virtually impenetrable designs, and thus solid foundations for the development of their own civilizations, not only allowed them to flourish, but also leaving behind a detailed array of archaeological finds, used as the basis of academia's claim of these groups having built these sites, but also claiming such sites as their work in historical records, records which are always absent any explanation as to how this was achieved. There also exist sites on Earth that, instead of allowing funded individuals to use additional re-inhabitations as a basis for an argument for their origins, can instead, due to the sheer mass of these historical footprints, each stacked atop one another, can instead actually indicate the site's enormous age. A land feature generated as a result of this incredibly long-lived accommodation that we call tells. Tells are artificial mounds formed from the accumulated refuse from generations of people. Tells are most commonly associated with the archaeology of the ancient Near East, but they are also found elsewhere, such as Central Asia, Eastern Europe, West Africa, and Greece. Within the Near East, they are concentrated in less arid regions, including Upper Mesopotamia, the Southern Levant, Anatolia and Iran which had more continuous settlement. What can only be explained as man-made, artificially generated sedimentary layers, one has to ask themselves how long would a particular site have to have been inhabited for to create such enormous, incredibly deep layers of earthwork, merely generated by its inhabitants living in said area, clearly for an unimaginably long period of time. The herbal citadel, for example, locally called Kalat, is a tell located within the historical city center of Erbil in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. The citadel appeared for the first time in historical sources in the Ibla tablets around 2300 BC, and although it has been confirmed as having been inhabited as far back as the Neolithic period, we have long argued due to their activities and capabilities that the Neolithics were a surviving remnant of the most recent lost civilization. If this is so, then it is highly likely that the citadel of Erbil is in fact far older than that of even the Neoliths, its incredible height also indicative of an inconceivably long history of virtually continuous inhabitation. How old is the Erbil citadel, or indeed the world's tells in general? Is it an earthwork merely started by our Neolithic ancestors? Or is it possibly a relic spanning far before currently understood or indeed accepted timelines for man? They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. The mission of our channel has always been to provide our viewers with impartial evidence found through ruthless logic, visual investigation, and expeditions to ancient sites, far too advanced to have been constructed by said culprits within currently known history, that being post-Ice Age man. Highly precise, highly advanced, or often enormous megalithic features, which not only exposes deliberate inaccuracies regarding currently guarded, staunchly defended, and academically regurgitated explanations of our history as a whole. The ancient Egyptians' construction of the Great Pyramids, for example, is not only argued as true by those who themselves have experienced this same conditioning and to never allow intellectual deviation. We are taught by nearly every influential medium, every aspect of historical study, an incomplete tale of events. For once anyone begins to question the legitimacy or the mainstream explanation for these sites and the construction events they would have been, it naturally leads to one unraveling more and more enigmas, anomalies, and inconsistencies within not only the tale of Giza, but countless aspects of currently pushed explanations for so many sites that contain to this day unexplained, remarkably precise, often ingenious methods of construction, all ignored by academia as a whole. 
For not only is Khufu's pyramid 6.5 million tons, polar to this unimaginably enormous undertaking it must have been to cut, move, and use so many stones at that location, with a plateau also argued by some as having artificial origins. Longyu Cave in China is yet another enormous ancient unexplained site, similar to Durinkyu, another ancient underground city found within Turkey. Longyu Cave has a staggeringly huge inner footprint, the many millions of metric tons of stone hollowed out to create the cave system has never been located. Stone cut using a tool which left an intriguing yet highly recognizable mark simply gone, excavated, and transported away somehow. We have always attempted to provide accurate information, and although we have our own opinions on said subjects, we feel it is far more important to convey all information, so that we all have an opportunity to come to our own conclusions based upon all the findings made during investigations. We attempt to provide that which we were, and still are, all being starved of. The whole picture was obscured from us, never actually teaching us how to apply our critical capacity to question the legitimacy of what we are told, but to push buttons, repeat information, and pull levers. Our mission is to share as many events as can be found regarding the technological advancement and also the possible true age of man. To prove beyond any reasonable doubt that not only have humans been around far longer than currently attested, but we, as a species, not only have a far greater yet hidden history. Many specialists around the globe also believe that we display traits of a past, a mass trauma which subjected us to such a difficult existence that behavioral traits within humans became prevalent demanded of by this hostile environment, some of which are still strongly displayed to this day within modern society. Although we have covered current problems with evolution theory, in relation to the missing leaps between species, vertebrates or phyla groups, natural selection is a completely different animal. For a behavioral trait to become prevalent, however, like some often displayed within societal behaviors, particularly when it comes to procreation or what we seek in a mate, are all indicative of a past experience of cataclysm. Our work's mission was initially to convey to the world as many aspects of history, still completely a mystery, and most importantly, to expose the conditioning and circulation of fallacies which for decades deceived modern society of a true tale of the history of our planet and especially our species. We began to notice that many of these ancient sites display similarities with each other, regardless of geographical distances. We have now identified countless sites which were undoubtedly the work of the same civilizations. Not only did these similarities show a sharing of technologies globally, thus proof of a global civilization, and due to having identified differentiations and similar features between certain sites, and the masonry techniques used therein, enabled us to make the first strongly supported successful identification of more than one lost civilization anywhere north of Giza's casing stones. Each subject we cover, not only adding a little bit more weight to our argument of past highly advanced civilization, but also expanding the field of evidence to prove its true case. It feels now that it is not an if, but rather a when in regards to truly knowing our true history. As our understanding of this lost past grows, so does our understanding of ourselves. It is an endeavor which we find highly compelling. Tombs are unquestionably one of the most fascinating discoveries which can be made within archaeology, the burial location of lost kings and emperors, due to the legacy and prestige of the individual. Locating the burial site of remains is incredibly historically important. With certainly the most famous tomb discovery, rumored partial raid, and curse said by some to have been cast upon those who committed such acts was that of King Tut, more commonly known as Tutankhamun. 
made by Howard Carter in the Valley of Kings on November the 4th, 1922. He located the unlooted tomb containing arguably the most famous historical figure and his accompanying artifacts ever found on Earth, the king's remains and his glorious solid gold jewel-encrusted death mask. Rumors have also circled other tombs for centuries, and if true, testament to the competence of the preservers of their kings and queens, many have claimed that when opened, for a few short astonishing moments, the individual seemed to have only just died, or in some cases appeared so well preserved as to still be alive, also claimed to have decayed in the air before the discoverer's eyes. This reported worldwide from England to Antarctica, yet physical documentation of such phenomenon remains lacking. Yet, I digress. The following item of interest, if publicly exposed, could possibly be just as historically important. Recently discovered within Inner Mongolia, a sparsely populated yet enormous span of terrain, this find, quietly studied and, interestingly, although clearly of an incredibly curious form, was photographed very little. A typical symptom we often encounter when a find is made which includes civilian assistance. Yet these civilians, once the controversy that a find may create is recognized by the powers that be, are soon notified their services are no longer needed, and details of its discovery confidential such as the media backout incurred within Cheops when Ganton Brink's robot successfully tunneled into a secret inner chamber, once rumored to have been connected to, or the tomb of the Egyptian god Osiris. Yet when the media and independent journalists were allowed to return to the site, Zahi Hawass and his team claimed the quote, tomb, had been looted in antiquity, leaving nothing but an empty room one that curiously took them two weeks to examine, before eventually allowing the public to see it. This find in many ways is no different, in terms of the apparent media blackout which has descended upon the tomb's occupant, is incredibly familiar. The contents of the tomb and the actual sarcophagus-esque tomb itself, it must be noted, are now proudly on public display. But the individual who was found within which now appears to many to have possibly been the remains of an ancient alien, have been kept under close guard, as any efforts to attain any additional study or photography of the corpse have been in vain, and no others are yet to surface. Could this, in fact, be the remains of an actual ancient alien? Possibly a visitor who died on our planet? Or a survivor of a crashed ancient alien craft? worship by an ancient civilization as a god. We find such possibilities incredibly intriguing. Hakeberg, meaning Fortress of Hake, is an ancient, once fortified ruin found within the Gurpinar district of the Van province in Turkey's Easter Anatolia region. It was used by Eurasian kings as a fortress during the 8th century BC. According to academia and Armenian folklore, the fortress was built by Haik, the legendary founder of the Armenian nation. It was situated close to the site where he slew the invading Babylonian King Bel, who, according to said legends, was in fact an ancient giant. Haik and his people had migrated south toward the warmer lands. There, they discovered a wicked giant known as Bel. Bel tried to impose his tyranny upon Haik's people but Haik refused to submit. Haik eventually rose up and defeated Bel in what has become known as the Battle of Giants. However, what is intriguing regarding this story is the fact that the sites mentioned are actually ruins left by the same highly advanced and thus highly capable lost civilization, responsible for many of the exquisitely stone-built sites which dot the many continents of Earth. Additionally, the fact that ancient giants are again mentioned surrounding such ruins could be seen as a compelling lead. Easter Island, Guatemala, the Amazon, Peru, South America, the list goes on, all with their own intriguing tales of ancient giants, 
either once inhabiting said sites, or in some cases, noted as being responsible for their construction. Much of the ancient site is now extremely eroded, yet in many areas, such as Cavustepe, a number of remarkably refined stone blocks are still to be found, presumably once foundation stones, these blocks still retaining their extraordinary machined-like appearance. These blocks were so perfectly carved, we can only replicate such levels of accuracy using modern-day technologies. The question is, how did a civilization so far back within known history create so many stones cast to the same degree of precision? What's more, these masterfully and mysteriously created stones are seemingly placed upon an even older site, one clearly of an even greater antiquity. Were these newer stone blocks actually robbed stonework from another area of the structure? These blocks then used by a later civilization to build upon these ruins? Are we actually looking upon two lost ancient civilizations' work in ascending order? Rather like what we have postulated later covered the enormous skeletal blocks of the Great Pyramid. Were these sites actually the work of a lost civilization of ancient giants? Or are all these separate accounts of the same beings found all over the world a mere coincidence? With so many sites and legends attached thereof telling the same thing, it is only a matter of time before the truth is proven beyond doubt.